So. Also, a little uh, a little raid history one on one. Back in the day, like raid history one on one. I yeah. really like this this segment. Yeah, yeah. We, need, we need to have turn this into like a weekly segment. But uh, <laughs> back in the day, you guys have no idea how much drama it was in clans. Like, Woo! oh, I remember my that. Goodness. I the sound or I'm you, well, you got to see my new shirt in honor of my 200th spreadsheet. You see my new oh, shirt? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Get it. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm all in for that. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> Freaking the sheets. That's right. I need for one of those for Bobo. I need one of those. Wait a minute. <laughs> what am I saying? Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be hanging out with Deadwood Jedi live on stream interacting with viewers, answering questions, talking about different topics while building a brand new shiny clan boss team to do a bunch of damage. We're building one of the best general utility teams for any game players to strive for. So I will show you the whole process. I'll condense like the two hours of footage down to like a 20 or 30 minute more YouTube friendly video. And then at the end, I will show you all of the champions, the stats I have on them, the gear and the mastery. So if you're just looking for like the build specific part of it, I will have a timestamp down there so you can click towards the end where I'm showing that part. But now let's get into the hangout and actually building the team with Deadwood Jedi. Let's get into it. Yeah, so what we're uh, what we're doing is we're gonna we're gonna finally you know get me with the times here. I've had a uh, I've had a lazy clan boss, uh, bad eater for two years. Um, the old old school tried and true. I actually didn't even have. I can move myself over so you guys can see these items. I actually didn't even have um, my uh, my AI set up. So I've been sitting here manualing my clan boss team for the first turn for God knows how long. When did that come out? AI's been out for like a year and a half now, right? Yeah, I really. I mean, just, okay. what's the plan then? So I was doing the bad eater. Walk right. people through kind of what you were thinking. Absolutely. So look, I there's a bunch of clan boss teams out there, and when you get to the level where like chosen's at, where he's basically end game, has done everything he needs to do, can do everything he needs to do, then we start to want to optimize for different things, right? We want to make sure that we are have something that's easy to do, it doesn't interrupt his day, right? So he's going to want a full auto team, right? Something just clicks go and it happens. He wants the one key ultra nightmare without any worries about it, right? Currently, his bad eater team mostly one keys, but sometimes doesn't. And like, let's 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 get rid of that kind of wishy washy stuff. So, the best team for any whale out there, any end game player out there, you don't even have to be a whale, but the best team is going to be the Myth Food team. It's simple. It's auto. You can run champions like Turvold. You can put up 120 million damage if the right affinity is there. You don't have to worry about anything. So. That's what we're gonna build uh, today. Like, there's obviously you know different tunes and different things that you can do. Like, I just built myself a team that's faster, right? But it does take a little bit of manualing. Well, I'm, I know, I know, Brad. <laughs> he doesn't want to manual anything. What is so, with the uh, slanderous attacks here? It's not slander. I'm just saying, like, I know you, right? You're a busy guy. You run. You have got multiple channels. You run multiple clans. You you don't have time to be messing around with you know, man. You want to click and go, right? You got. You don't mind if it runs 20 minutes if you can do something else for that 20 minutes, right? The thing okay, you don't want to do I'll, is have to sit there I'll take that. and do some work, right? So If you were to like that, that's, that's okay. Right, right, right. So we're just trying to accommodate the needs of the person running the team. And so this is going to be the best choice for that. Um, and so my whole goal right now is just to get the speeds of all these champions, get it, you know, get that part tuned. And once we get those speeds about where we want it, then we can go back and we can fine tune all the damage out of it and try and get the numbers even higher but even if you do a bad job of doing the damage on this team it can still one key that's how ridiculous it is so that's what we're going to be doing um and what makes uh just for anybody tuning in what makes Demetha such a uh, or i mean uh, what makes are you using Eris by the way are you using Eris yes, by the way are. yes we are yeah okay so what makes like Eris and Demetha kind of unlock it well, the reason why is just due to their skills. Demitha, obviously, she's got... First off, she's like, oh, we got a booker? Okay, cool, 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 cool. So Demitha has a uh, block damage buff on a three-turn cooldown when booked. It's an insane ability. So if we can get her going fast enough, she can do that every single turn, which allows the entire team to be unkillable with one champion, right? Ridiculous. On top of that, she has a buff extension ability. 
this is a pretty rare ability just to have in general. So when you can combine those two things, it really opens up some possibilities. Now, the part that you're asking about Eris, what makes her so unique is that one, oh, that's not Eris. There's Eris. Look kind of similar to me. Uh, one, she has an increased speed buff, right? It's ridiculously good and everybody loves it. Um, and so when you have an increased speed buff, obviously that's going to make the entire team go farther, faster. But to get to really fast speed, you need to have that up. You need to really extend that, right? Because it only lasts for two turns. As soon as somebody it falls off, they don't get the benefit. So really you need that extension. That's what the Mytha provides, which allows us to go super, super fast. Usually you have to bring in a second, you know, another champion. We don't need to because we have the Mytha here doing that work for us. And then on top of that, she removes a random debuff from all allies. So she's giving you a cleanse for those, you know, those affinity debuffs, for those stuns. And because of the way we speed tuned it, she goes first, cleanses all those debuffs, puts that speed buff on everybody. The myth extends it. And then Demitha goes last and puts a block damage out on us. So we both are affinity friendly and unkillable. And that allows us to bring in one more champion seeker to give us the speed boost we need to get to these crazy speeds. And allows us to bring in still two damage dealing champions. And now, I think the two best for this are Fushan and Turvold. That's that's the plan for today. Someone asked about the Void Legendary. Uh, however you say it, I say it wrong every time, but to Anaric. To Honorok? To Honorok, sure. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. I, I actually have that one. <laughs> I know. She's ridiculously good. The thing is, though, for this, she's not going to be ideal. She does a couple things that we don't want. She places debuffs. And none of the debuffs she places are actually helping us, right? She's not giving us poisons, HP burn, decrease defense, weaken. Those are the ones we actually want. What she does is like block buffs and decrease attack. They're not actually going to help us with our damage. On top of that, Eris gives us a natural counterattack with her passive ability, which makes her ridiculously good for this. So every time an ally is attacked, she's going to counterattack. So even though she's, she's going on a 3-1 ratio, she's taking three turns, right? And two of those are attacks because obviously the speed boost one isn't an attack. But basically what happens is she's getting an extra attack. So she's getting three attacks every turn. We're going to try and put her in a toxic set. So she's going to give us a full debuff bar of poisons because she's getting three attacks every single turn. It's a ridiculous ability of hers. And so that really gives us a huge damage multiplier for this team. If you're able to get Eris in a toxic set, one key is pretty much guaranteed for you. So um, assuming, you know, everything else is working the way it should. So first off next so we'll this be wouldn't set. be like a very beginner friendly one because you need to hit some pretty good speeds on it or oh this is definitely not a beginner team right if you can make the speeds and you have the champions it's a wonderful comp to go with and i fully fully recommend building it but it is not what i would call beginner friendly right it takes some um expertise and there are some like i get it really helps to get into the calculator and like like a like a mathematical calculator, just pull it up and you know check out some of your numbers because it can get a little bit dicey when you're trying to adjust for the different affinities and things like that. So like this definitely it's definitely more nuanced than many of the other ones. Um, you want to you you're gonna want to pay attention to that. So it is definitely a more advanced kind of build, but it's not particularly difficult. Um, the speeds what, you know once you get them you're set. What are the uh, fastest speeds you need to get to? Well, we have Demitha at. 291 that's the fastest speed so it's something that's attainable and yeah. can be attainable for some earlier level counts if you have the right pieces of gear um but it's generally pretty tricky one of the advantages of this one though is all your dps champions are under 200 speed so you know you can really build your dps champions for damage right they're not going like at 240 or 220 like you have in the bad eater team so it makes it a lot easier to really stack damage on these champions which is one of the advantages i would say to it it's yeah it's almost easier to build than the bad eater team uh gear gear wise yeah gear wise i actually think it is because you're you have to stack two champions basically to be fast and after that it's really simple right the hard part is like the the ratio between the numbers is pretty tight and tight so it's like on the bad eater you can have somebody going between 240 and 250 speed on this it's like well i can have them going 184 or 183 or like exactly this with exactly these speed sets so that's the part that makes it a little bit more difficult um and uh, a little bit trickier to to actually build and make make work well for you um and that's why i don't say this is a i i wouldn't say this is a beginner team because it does take that little bit of uh fine tuning to really make it shine uh, now is one more is the one click upgrade the biggest thing raid has ever done in your opinion 
Oh my god, it's so nice. It's so nice. It's it's an argument between that and the team setup. Those two things have really changed the game in so many ways. Um, I wonder if we could use it. Yeah, it's Honestly. absurd to me that it took four years, but uh, better late uh, than never. But It is absurd. You're not wrong. But at least we got it. Yeah, these uh these youngins nowadays, they don't understand the game that we used to have to play. <laughs> they, don't, they don't get it. They don't get it. spoiled. That's what we, <laughs> that's what I like to say. Not a little bit. This is where it gets tough. Back in uh back in my day, um <laughs> you'd you tell them, grandpa. You'd start a clan boss fight and it would the game would crash and you would lose your key and then your clan would kick you because you're not doing clan boss damage. That like that's what happened back in my day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not toxic at all. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit low on glyphs, but you can use okay. a few. Okay. That is another another possible thing, right? So if we're always, you know, that's always one great thing. If you're, Jesus. burn. You have but... uh, you have more than a few, my friend. You have an obscene amount of glyphs. Um, at sixty. <laughs> Oh man, sixty-six star glyphs. Cool. I have like three on my account left. Um, <laughs> well, River's like a little bit low as seventy of each. <laughs> Just a couple. Just a couple. Okay. But I'm about to hit that um, progress mission where I got to use like a hundred glyphs or whatever. So that's uh, yeah. It's just this, but you have it's literally every glyph. It's not. It's not just this. This who cares? Don't use the speed. Use the HP. The Heck, anything else? Oh, we'll man. be all right. We'll make it. Because I can't. Oh, damn it! I, I can't wait to see Karam with like 157 speed. <laughs> Just like glyphed up the hill. Oh, hell. <laughs> now the moment of truth. Uh, will it work or will it fail? Hands off. times the speed <laughs> well an hour later well, let's see so what's the what's the deadwood if it does work what's the deadwood prediction on the damage force affinity let's see if you can nail it down to exact force affinity is going to be bad for seeker but it's fine for fushan and eris as long as eris doesn't take the stun we should be in good shape my guess is I'll 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 stay I'll say oh boy I'm gonna say a hundred million. My guess would probably be a little bit over that, but your Fushan's a little bit weaker than mine was. Uh, your Turvold's pretty much on point though, um, and I think your Seeker's actually stronger than mine was, so I'm not as concerned about it. But I'm gonna say ninety-eight point seven nine. Well, we're off a little bit here already. So. Uh oh. Yeah, because Seeker got the stun and we haven't lensed. Unless, actually, let's see. I think Eris actually goes again, so we should be okay here. Yep, there we go. Got the cleanse. All right, we're good to go. No problem. All right, I said, you got to lock down a number, though, Deb, but I said 98.79. 98.79? Yep. That's what you said? Yep. Uh, Fine, I'll say 103.82. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see how this how this goes. It's working though. It's working. We're we're in tune. Are we? Are we sure? Because sometimes they I've seen them flip on like the second or third rotation and fail. That doesn't that happen sometimes? Yeah, it can mess up later on. Um, but it looks like we're in pretty good shape. We should be in sync. We're actually not going to be in sync yet. But if Demitha gets the block damage, we should be in pretty good shape. Yep, looks like we're all all together. So far, everything's working the way it's supposed to be. What's up, Calamity? Thanks for the raid. Hey, thank you for the raid. Woo! Did you see those numbers by Turvold? You see those Turvold it's numbers? It's getting spicy. It's ramping up. 600k? I'll take it. I'll take it. Now, there, someone was saying in the chat what you have to hit for for Helm Smasher to be worth it. And I think it was about like that. It was like 400 to 600k. I don't know. 
<laughs> off, off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah, I no, mean, I know. It, 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 the problem is, is like, yeah, that might be worth it for Turvold's A3, but he also has that A1 as well, right? So he's only doing the A3 every other attack. So it's, I don't know that it's really, really makes sense um, at that point. But yeah, it could be. Definitely could be. I mean, I built a team. I did a double Demitha team the other day. I was trying to, I was trying to go for the fastest one key I could. So I did a double Demitha. So he got ten buffs up, uh, and he was doing five and a half million per hit, which was pretty. pretty oh sick. my goodness, that's ridiculous. Dude, yeah, a le- like a five and a half, five and a half, four, five hundred fifty thousand. I'm sorry, five hundred fifty thousand. Okay, I was gonna over- say like, what is doing, going on yeah, here? No, no. He's doing over a million per per A three. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. And so at that point, maybe Helm Smasher would have been a good choice to do, right? Really, really uh, juice those numbers up a bit, but um, yeah, it was pretty fun. This is pretty solid. You can see it's ramping up pretty quick here. And you got all those poisons up, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. So that's the power of, of uh, Eris with her toxic set. Yeah, just toss another one up. And that's a great thing too. When you take that uh, the master hexer, it'll extend the duration of those poisons. Taking uh, the other one on, right next to it, right, that gives you a higher chance. It'll make sure that she lands them more often too. So it turns out whatever seventy five percent chance to an eighty percent chance. Pretty nice. And then you know the big thing, the big swing damage wise with this comp actually. Wait, master hexer does. Master Hexer extends the duration of the poisons from top. Oh, to top. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I, I thought you were talking about Sniper, like the increased mm. chance. Snipe, sniper increases the chance of those toxic sets landing, too. They both they both have that effect, though. Um, but see, right here, you notice we don't have decreased defense up. This is one of the things where, uh, you know, the timing of skills will make a big difference. And Fushan specifically is really important, getting that... Um, getting that uh, A, whatever you call it, the A3 to land that decreased defense becomes really important. Because um, obviously that makes a huge damage swing for us. So if ever he doesn't land it or it falls off or something, you'll see the, the significant difference. But you can see we're already at 22 million on turn 12. The ramp up is real. Yeah, so it's one of those where if you're paying attention and you want to leave as fast as possible, you can wait for 70 and bounce out. Yes, absolutely. I've actually done that a lot. Um, what I'll do is I'll watch, I'll, I'll like, I'll click auto, go get myself some coffee, whatever, get, you know, a bite. I'll come back. We'll be at like, especially on nightmare because nightmare is quick. It's only 40 million damage you need. Right. I'll come back and all of a sudden I'll be like, oh yeah, we're at there. I'll click end and do the next, the next key that I need to do. Um, so it's pretty, it's a pretty nice team cause it does the damage really quickly. Um, but also, you know, just click auto you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> yeah for sure so well yeah but on this one you had to do the custom right you couldn't you couldn't just like run it but i mean it's saved now it'll yeah 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 yeah, yeah of course yeah once you've got it but yeah. this is a great thing about clan boss right like it's it's there so the next time you go into any clan boss team it's going to have that same setup that same team set up and ready to run so you just click auto and go you never have to go into the setup menu again or anything else it's there for you yep yep Oh. Also, a little uh, a little raid history one on one. Back in the day, like raid history one on one. I yeah. really like this this segment. Yeah, yeah. we need, we need to have turn this into like a weekly segment. But uh, <laughs> back in the day, you guys have no idea how much drama it was in clans. Like, Woo! oh, I remember my that. Goodness. Like, I, I lost friends over this stuff. Like, w- like what would happen was, once once you killed the clan boss, no one else could attack it. And clan boss is the best source of rewards for account progression. So people yeah. would flip out. Like if they didn't get to attack the clan boss because the team rushed in there and everybody used their keys before someone else woke up and could use their keys. And then I'd be having people DMing me like I'm leaving the clan if so-and-so uses their keys again before I get a chance. And like uh, people raging at each other. I mean, it was nasty. And then, it was also but, one of those yeah. things where you had to watch your run because as soon as you hit a certain number, you had to quit it, right? You can't do it yeah. anymore. Uh, yeah, because if you did extra damage, you're screwing over your teammates because now they can't yeah. hit it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. 
And well, and then there was the, that, and then you combine that with the clan hopping, and it was just a, a whole mess. I never got into that. I never bothered, but yeah, it was pretty juiced up accounts if you d if you took advantage Dude. of that. <laughs> Dude. Ridiculous. I mean, that's the kind of thing where I would just, I, I you know, I didn't do that, but I, I can, I would only imagine just get all you need to really, like, let's get, let's get 10 buddies. We each keep, create an extra account, each start up a clan. You just take turns hopping through for the day. I'll spend I'll spend a thousand gems to get some extra keys, but as a reward, I'm also getting ten times the clan boss rewards. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, all the gear and the void shards and the sacred shards. The, yeah, and the books. Yeah, right, the like books. it was insane. Yeah. I was never. I was my account. I was like when I got to Ultra Nightmare. Um, in my clan, like by the time I had joined, they had just the first Man Eater Unkillable team had come out. Right. Where it's like, you gotta get to these kind of numbers and maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Um, and so that was where I was at when I joined. So I never never even had the opportunity of clan hopping or any of that stuff. They'd like fix things like immediately after, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, you know. Yeah. Pretty nuts. <laughs> pretty nuts. And Crazy. I don't, they didn't even have Ultra Nightmare on release. They added that later like i think like seven or eight months in they added ultra nightmare that's what they're going to do with hydro i'm pretty sure and the meta in the early days of clan boss was double counter attack mm -hmm. like like permanent permanent counter attack was like the first i remember yeah the first i remember game, watching yeah was was it you or was it you or is it uh um oh god what's his name now i can't remember uh Hizzle. I yeah, think that yep. uh, showcased that. Yep. I think maybe you guys did a collab or something, but I remember watching that and going, oh, that's a, that's a nice team. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Okay. Me and Kizzle, we both had, um, like, Martyr and Valkyrie, and we were mm. going hard in the paint with the double uh, counterattack. And yeah. people were using Skull Crusher all the time, and yeah. The th the three counterattack champions were the most important champions in this game. Yeah. Yep. On my first legendary tier list, I had Martyr at rank one. Um, oh. and then on my second uh, tier list, I had Valkyrie at number one. Yeah, back in the day, counterattack was everything. And they've to this day, have they ever added uh, a full team counterattack champion? Th yeah, they have. They Clarion is so scared thing. to add that for some reason. They just will not do it. Mm -hmm. It's weird too because it is one of the few things that I think they could add. But you know, on the other hand, it makes those champions pretty pretty important right it's like it's nice to be able to have that as um like oh the, these champions are unique they will always be unique because they're the only ones that have that right um yeah it's unfortunate that they're, attack champions but you know it's unfortunate that they're both the same affinity but um, yeah martyr and valkyrie yeah. yeah that's that's the poopy part for sure somebody did ask you who the top five dps champs would be for slotting into this comp yeah the reason why uh uh Freak, freaky, freaky G, freaky G, yeah, freaky G. Uh, he's asking why I don't have a Brogni or Geo in the speed tune list. The reason why is because Geomancer is a DPS champion, right? He fits in any team, just does damage. He's not actually the reason why a team can or cannot work. And Brogni is very similar. Brogni does block debuff, so he fits into any team where you want a DPS champion. He could definitely do that. And any spot where you need a block debuff champion, he can fit into those too. Um, but there aren't any, there are, there's not really any teams that the functionality of that team is built around those champions, right? Um, now, some teams work better with those champions, but, you know, especially, specifically Brogni, he can enable some really big shield teams. But then again, you still need like one or two other champions to fully utilize that ability. So that's why he's not, there's not a, a list of Brogni kind of tunes. Yep. And then, uh, Someone asked you about the top five uh, champions for DPS. Five DPS slots for this? For this particular yep, one? Yep, yep, All right. If you're just going pure damage, right? Not like ease of build and stuff, Ninja is going to be number one. But I, I prefer not to not to put Ninja on my list. So I'm not going to... We're going to take him out of that five, right? Because he doesn't work for every affinity and it's a pain in the butt to you. So taking Ninja out of this. Now, you, there's like we talked about before, there's two DPS slots on this team, right? There's Fushan. And there's Turvold. Now, Fushan, I feel, is very valuable because of the speed aura. 
you try to make a 270 speed air to like 280 speed Eris with toxic set on I'll, I'll give you you know kudo points if you can make that happen um so i feel like the speed aura is pretty important but if you skip out the speed aura, you don't want to worry about it or you go hey i'm gonna have somebody in that spot anyway i don't care you know i'm not worried about you know matching all the dps and all the debuffs right because you do need decreased defense you do need weaken out of those two spots you're like just tell me your top five Hervold's number one for me. Uh, Varl the Destroyer, uh, Doom Tower Champion, would be number two. Oh, wow. Hot take. He's, an, he's, he's like Ninja in the fact that his attack ramps up over time. Incredibly strong hitting. Um, I would say that probably number three would be Draco, just because of the utility of him. Um, even better if you can turn off his A3 ability. Um arguable though because the number four on this list could easily replace draco and that would be jintoro who's absolutely insane for this type of a team um just does crazy crazy damage um so that would be the top four number five melanor um i think anax might be the number five spot because anax just hits so hard and he brings everything you need decreased defense weaken and poisons kind of a you know do it all type of champion so I think that would be my my fifth choice um you know but like this is more filling that pervolt spot re really right um we're not as worried about the the fushan's part of it because you know there's two requirements from those dps slots right one of them as i said before speed aura really helpful the other part is you need one of them to be red affinity otherwise eris gets a stun and it breaks when you're going against magic affinity so you need at least one red affinity champion in there this is why fushan's ideal he also brings decreased defense but if you're not, you know, if you're not worried about that part of it, uh, yeah, it, it kind of opens it up. But Fushan, Fushan also does crazy good damage for this, so he's a really, really strong choice. But yeah, Bellinor is really doesn't, I don't think, holds up at the top ends if you don't have, if you don't have him with the crit rate aura. I don't think his utility is as good as many of the other champions available. So. What about kind of um? What about Fane and Whisper? Fane, Fane would be fantastic. Whisper, Rodos, champions with extra turns cannot be used in this comp because they will burn through those ex the increased yeah. speed buffs. So you can't use those because, champions. like with my last Draco. comp, I had Draco and Relentless, and he was able to just burn through. But mm. there you go. Oh, uh, I guess short on skills is saying Ninja can be used in this comp against Force. Um, is he just can't weak hit with his A1 on the top of turn two. So, you don't mind restarting occasionally? <laughs> Great option. Great option. Um, what do you do? Do you have any other uh, suggestions for, like, top EPS champions chosen? Anybody that you're like, oh, yeah, this would be amazing. The ones that came to mind were, like, Fane and Whisper and Bellinor, um, Venus, um, mm. After the rework, Venus might be in Cupidus. That might be an interesting combination here. Yeah. Um, other than that... Geomancer is a great choice. Absolutely. Um, less good because we're blocking the damage, so his reflex is not as strong. Uh, somebody was asking in the chat. Um, but he is a really good choice, and he's red affinity, so he does work for this. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I could see that. Fane, I think, would be really good. Fane's always good. <laughs> right? She's like... She's like your solid go-to, I think, for this kind of thing. Definitely a good choice. And, you know, like, uh, champions like Farrakhan and the Frock and the Fat um, would be good. Krila would be good. Ally Attack's always a nice, you know, even Longbeard, I think, would be, you know, fine. Um, yeah, Anax is beastly. Brachus is a good choice, too, sure. Brachus is a good one. The hard part, if Rugnor, I love Rugnor. God, I love Rugnor. Have you played with Ragnar? Like he's so he's so good. A little oh. barely, not as much as you, but barely. I'm not an, I'm not an expert on him. No. Yeah, he hits hard. He does good does good damage, and he brings that decrease defense and weaken. But he's not as good in a team like this where it blocks damage because then it doesn't proc his passive, which reduces cooldown. So because you have to turn off his A2 to make him work. So he's not ideal really for this, but he's very very good. Uh, looks like I'm. I I think you're gonna win the. Uh, the damage contest here. Clan Brad, boss expert confirmed. It's pretty close. 
Ramp it up, boys. Let's go. Ramp I said, <laughs> if my memory serves me right, I said 98.79. I think you did. I think you did. Oh, God. Hey, I'm going to grab more coffee while this I can avoid watching. He's not going to be here for me to gloat. Lose. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll give you, I'll give you some time to gloat. Don't worry. There you go. I expect a an article on Deadwood's site with my picture displayed as the uh, damage prediction champion. Although I think I'm going to end up selling it short too. Or I mean, uh, or overshooting it, I mean. It's going to come short of... I mean, as long as I think we still got a little bit, we can roll with uh, like glyphs and stuff. When I get that mission to use a hundred glyphs, I'll slam it up a little bit. Um, it's also it would do more damage on right, magic. Chosen, I have. I know what your next video has to be now. <laughs> next video, you have to plug this into the optimizer and see if you can improve the damage. Oh no. Optimizer versus Deadwood comparison. <laughs> I said uh, before you ran away that I expect a picture on your website as the damage prediction champion. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I'll, send you know what, you, I'll send you a good picture. Here's what I need picture. from you now. I need a picture of you just like pointing or like talking or something and then i'll just put like a damage prediction next to it on each of these speed tunes yep i wasn't predicts it'll be <laughs> there you go we'll take it i love this idea i'm all in on this what was the and number from deadwood i think it was like 102 point something one oh i said one up yeah i think so 103.82 or something like that i i ended up being wrong too because i said 98.79 but we also you're not wrong yet. We're doing about two million per turn, so you're not wrong yet. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be a little high though. Um, but we could we could slam a few glyphs in there, and there's a few little random things we could do to to ramp it up. But I mean, still, because and I think force is, the the top affinity will probably be magic, right? Yes, that'll be your best affinity by far. By far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll do really good damage that way. But yeah, for sure, there's definitely glyphs and stuff that can really pump this up a bit. Um, and honestly, I feel like I, I'm not really happy with the Fushan numbers. Like, I, I feel like we should be able to stack like another thousand attack on him. Like, I just feel like it's a little bit on the low side right now. So. There's definitely some room to bump that. Bushan, why'd you drop decreased defense? Brah. Brah. Killing. Killing me. Like, for reals. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You're gonna fall a little short, but not too bad. Not too bad. It's pretty. It's a pretty good guess, I'd say. Pretty good guess. No decrease defense is gonna mess up this last this last turn though. He just still did 500k. That's ridiculous. I just not landing the debuffs. I might have to look at. Oh, you know what? I don't think we have his accuracy up high enough. I think we forgot to glyph some of his accuracy. Oh, that's right. Time. Yeah. So it was falling off a little bit. That's not too bad then. Ninety six point eight. Hey, hey, that's pretty solid. Look at that. Forty two from Turvold. Forty three million. Yeah, and not my Fushan any... does about five million more or so. And Ares and Fushan ended up like exactly the same. Yeah, poisons, man. Poisons are strong. This is this is where my 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 YouTube viewers will be like. Eris is clearly stronger than Fushan. <laughs> like, yep, uh, there you go.
And boom, a massive shout out to Deadwood Jedi for taking the time to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. And I will link to his channel down below so you can check out his stuff as well because he cranks out amazing content for Raid and the clan boss in general. So uh, first off, let's start with Bushan, who we had in the leader position. And I will show you the total stats right here. Let me put down the camera while we are showing you the different stats and masteries. So there is the stats on Fushan. And then here is the masteries for Fushan. And then next up, we had Turvald in the comp as the Void Legendary DPSer. So uh, we will do the same thing and show you the stats right here for Turvald and the gear that he was wearing and then the masteries right here for him. And then in the third spot, we had a Seeker who is the Magic Affinity Epic. This was the gear that he was wearing and then the stats right here for the Seeker. And the mastery is involved with him going down to a war master. And then in the fourth spot, we have the rare heiress and the gear on her with the toxic set. And then the total stats right here. And then the masteries on heiress was these ones right here going down to a war master. And then lastly, we had the void epic in Demetha. And this was the gear. Had to get a lot of speed on her. Total stats. Got her up to 291. And on the masteries right here, going down to War Master. So I'll come back on camera and that will do it for this one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.